Hello everyone, welcome to video 11 of chapter 3. In this video we continue our discussion on the theorem of simplex algorithm. We have encountered already the optimality theorem where all the CJs are non-negative. That indicates you have reached the optimum. Now let's discuss the other cases, namely if some of the CJs are negative, that is, at least one of them is negative. Let's say we pick, um, well, we just call that negative term CK, let K be the index. And this K would be bigger than M plus 1, because these are index for the um, non-basic variables. Okay, And then we know that we could let XK enter, we should ac actually, as a basic variable, and then CK might take a positive value and, and make the um, objective function smaller. So that is an easy conclusion. Then the big question would be, um, if I want this to be a basic variable, then we have to remove one of the existing basic variables to be replaced by XK. So which one should I replace? Okay, so let's um, take a look at the LP problem in canonical form. Take I there, and then uh, in that, or the constraint in that, we will set all the xj's to be zero for all the non-basic variables, except for when j equals k, where this ck is negative. Okay. And that means, on the left-hand side, I'll have only two terms for each equation. One is the basic variable from the canonical form, and then I will have a1, k, x, k, and right-hand side is b1. Okay? You can pull out um, the other slide and look at it, and you'll see that. Um, this is the only non-negative term, and it looks like this here. Um, on this column. That column is repeated. So for the mth equation, it will be xm plus amk xk equals bm. Okay, we can rewrite these, um, express the basic variables in terms of this non-basic variable for the time being. So we will move this column here to the right-hand side, which now I write here to the right of it. So equation 1 becomes x1 is b1 minus this product a1k xk and then you go through all the equation and then equation m would be xm is bm minus amk xk. And we know all these variables are restricted therefore it's non-negative so this gives us a constraint to the right hand side. Look at this right-hand side here. It contains the constants, which are given, coefficient, this is given, and xk is the thing we are considering changing into basic variable. So this xk will be, um, will have um, restrictions, actually constraint. Each equation will give a constraint to xk. Okay? So let's take a closer look at all these constraints. Okay, let's summarize. So the constraints for the i-th equation would be bi minus aikxk bigger than zero for i from 1 to, to m, m of them. Okay. So we know that now we have inequality. If you want to find the exact condition for xk, then it depends on the sign of this a here, because if you want to write xk relate to bi, um, you will have to divide both sides by this quantity. And if it's a negative sign, then you have to change the inequality. So it matters the sign of this guy. Okay, so we'll have some discussions now. Okay, so here is case one. If I shall find a, a that is for the index i is negative. Okay, so here I repeat the constraint. And then this guy is negative. What does it give to me? If this is negative, negative this is positive, then I can move the bi to the right-hand side. 
and then divide it by that on both sides, then I get xk is bigger than this over that, where the negative of aik will cancel the negative of bi, the two negative signs dropped. Okay? And um, so um, let's take a look at this constraint. xk shall be bigger than this ratio. And we know that the B is non-negative, and the AIK here is negative. So this number here on the right-hand side is actually a negative number. So this constraint tells us that XK shall be bigger than a negative number, which is always okay because XK is restricted, right? It's non-negative. So that means I could, um, XK, I could take it as large as possible because we want it to be big so it will make the objective function decrease. Okay, so let's go back to the objective function and then let's replace the xi with this xk in the basic variable. If we shall do that, what will we have? Well, well z will be minus z naught plus all other terms and they will have this term ck times xk. And then we see that um, xk, ck is negative, and if we want to reduce the value of z, then I can take xk large. We can take it as large as possible, and then this term will become negative infinity. Okay, so in this case, if we do this switch, then the z value will be unbounded below z can go to negative infinity. Okay, sorry, this shall be xk here. I will fix that in the handout. Next, we discuss the case where one of the aik is zero. Let's say for index i, aik is zero. What does it mean? So this is the condition for any a. If the aik is zero, then this term is 0 times xk, which is 0, so we end up with the bk is bigger than 0, which is always okay because bk's are non-negative. Okay, and then we will have a similar discussion. So we can do an argument same as for case 1. Um, if we replace the xi with the xk in the basic variable, then we can have that the objective function z will go to negative infinity. Okay, so the more interesting observation will be the following. So we discussed it, the cases where one of them is equal to zero or less than zero. And then we conclude that if we make this variable change, meaning, okay, basic variable change, move that xk into basic variable, replacing the xi, we'll get unbounded objective function. That's with 1. So, then we observe that if we shall be in the situation where all these ai case are less than or equal to 0, then you will have to make choice of changing it. Then no matter which one you change would lead you to the situation that z is unbounded. Okay? So that is the important one, and we'll summarize it in the theorem. Okay, so here is the second theorem. We call it theorem U. U stands for unbounded minimum, and this, the statement is the following. So for the linear programming problem in canonical form, if there is index k, the k is uh, between m plus 1 and n, such that the coefficient ck is less than 0, strictly less than 0, in the objective function, meaning in the last row of the form we wrote, and at the same time, that corresponding column, all the coefficients a, i, k for the constraints are less than or equal to 0 for all i from 1 to 2 to n. And now this should be m, not n. I will fix that in the handout. Okay, 
So if that column or the AI case are less than or equal to zero, then based on the discussion and observation we made so far, we would conclude that the objective function would be unbounded below, that is, z would go to negative infinity. So if in your um, algorithm of linear programming simplex method you reached a step that the criterion stated in this theorem is satisfied, then you can stop the algorithm and make this conclusion, that is, you have unbounded minima. Okay, so hope um, you enjoyed it, and next time we'll go into the more complicated case. So, see you next time.